Hello, we are continuing our talk today about stroke prevention with one of world's, or Europe's at least, prominent stroke experts. Could you please tell us more about yourself? No, thanks, Helena. So I'm Dr. Webb. I'm a, Alistair Webb. I'm a consultant neurologist in Oxford, and I'm a Wellcome Trust Fellow and academic researcher at the Centre for Prevention of Stroke and Dementia at the University of Oxford in the UK. Could you tell us why it's so difficult to prevent stroke? So I think one of the difficulties we have with stroke is actually there's lots of complicated processes which can cause strokes. So it's not quite like a heart attack where there's the most heart attacks occur due to one specific kind of reason where the arteries fill up. But for stroke, there's lots of different mechanisms. So the heart, most commonly, the three mechanisms is when the heart becomes beats away and clots form in the heart to form a stroke, or whether arteries in the neck can fur up and can cause a stroke, or whether the small vessels deep inside the brain can become unhealthy and you can have a stroke because of that. But there's lots and lots of other reasons why strokes happen, which means there's lots and lots of things that need to be targeted to prevent strokes from occurring. But it is true that most strokes happen because of the common risk factors that most people are aware of high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, smoking, and all the things that relate to them and cause them. But actually, it's very difficult to control these as well. First of all, you have to identify who has high blood pressure or who has high cholesterol. And people need to accept that it's important to get these things under control, both by taking the right measures in their life to lose weight, um, eat healthier, and so on. And if necessary, to take their medications, remember to take them. And to, and to continue to check these things to make sure they are well controlled. And so not only is it a very complicated process to identify who is at risk and the different mechanisms which cause stroke, there's also a big part in people accepting that they have control of this problem themselves and to be able to control their risk factors to reduce their own chance of having a stroke in the future. Okay, I just heard that you mentioned several risk factors and among them you you stressed out several times high blood pressure uh, and this is I'm guessing this is no coincidence that high blood pressure is uh, not only one of, of the 10 modifiable stroke risk factors but it's quite often as you did it now it's singled out uh, from from the majority of other risk factors and placed there as one that we should attack first. So why is that? And what's the relation between high blood pressure and stroke? Thank you. So high blood pressure is my particular area of interest and in its effects on the brain. And it, it's true that it is the single most important risk factor for stroke across the whole population. And in fact, over half of all strokes are due to high blood pressure. And this is for a couple of reasons. First of all, high blood pressure contributes to all of these mechanisms I mentioned before, the regular heartbeats, furring up of arteries, damage to the vessels in the brain. So it causes most types of stroke. It's also very, very common. So a quarter of adults in the Western world are, have high blood pressure. And actually, if you look across the entire world, in a recent uh, global burden of disease studies, where they looked at all possible risk factors for all diseases in the world, high blood pressure comes out as number one or two, depending on how you look at it. And not only do half, a quarter of all adults have high blood pressure, but actually we only know that they have high blood pressure in about half of them. And about half of people, we don't actually make the diagnosis. And in the UK, for example, over five million people are walking around with high blood pressure, but aren't aware of it. And actually, even in the people who we know they have high blood pressure, about two in every five, we don't control it well enough. So they still have high blood pressure despite being diagnosed with it. And that's because they haven't taken the right lifestyle um, changes to reduce their blood pressure, or they haven't been prescribed enough medications, or they don't take their medications regularly enough. And therefore, not only is high blood pressure very common, not only does it cause the vast majority of types of stroke, but actually, even when we know about it, it's not well enough controlled. And as a result, it was, it's the single most common cause, ultimately, of all strokes in the population. Well, that sounds scary, for sure. Uh, on top of that, Europe is aging. Uh, as we saw from the Burden of Stroke report, there is an expected increase of 34% in to absolute number of strokes in Europe uh, between now and 2035. And this is 
predominantly due to aging Europe's aging population. Um, cerebral small vessel disease, a condition affecting small blood vessels in our brains, is often called the most common aging brain problem that you may never heard of. Um, however, it's, it is related to stroke. Uh, apparently, SVDs account for more than one third of strokes, around one third of strokes, and uh, it would have been beneficial for people to know more about it. Could you tell us more uh, about the condition itself, uh, what can be done about it, and how it would affect stroke prevention in elderly people? Sure. So you're right, small vessel disease is a very important and very difficult problem. So it is due to chronic damage to the small vessels deep inside the brain. And it increases very strongly as we get older, almost to the point where it's a feature of aging. I mean, over half of people who are 65 or, or more will have a degree of small vessel disease on a brain scan. And by that time, people are over 80. The majority of people will have some small vessel disease. However, the worse it is, and whether you have it or not, is definitely related to the risk of having a stroke and of having dementia. So ultimately, about a third, 30% of all strokes are due to small vessel disease and a blocked blood vessel deep inside the brain. And probably up to 40% of all people who have dementia is due to small vessel disease. And part of the problem is that actually we don't understand it that well. So although we have a good understanding of why hearts become irregular and blood clots form in the heart and cause strokes, we don't have a very good understanding of why the blood vessels deep inside the brain are become unhealthy as we get older and result in stroke and dementia. And this is a major frontier in stroke research nowadays. One thing we do have a good idea about is that high blood pressure is probably the single main risk factor for small vessel disease. And particularly having high blood, blood pressure early in life, getting worse as you get older, relates to having more small vessel disease and worse small vessel disease as you get older. It's probably related to diabetes as well. But beyond that, we don't have a very good idea of other things that contribute and how to pre prevent it. So the best advice is, again, to know whether you have high blood pressure and get it under control early in life is a critical thing to stop the developing problems later on. And if you are older and have high blood pressure, controlling it then is also very important. If you do have small vessel disease, this does cause strokes where blood vessels block, but it can also be associated with the risk of having bleeding in the brain. And so understanding what kind of problem you have in the brain is important for choosing the best treatments after a stroke. Before that has happened, I think, again, high blood pressure is the most important factor that we can target to prevent developing small vessel disease. So what is the age frame when this condition becomes um, more prominent or, or more likely to happen to, to manifest? At which age? So it's, if you scan everybody who seems healthy, then people, you start to identify some small vessel disease in a reasonable proportion of people in their mid 40s and older. And by the time they're 65, half of people will have some changes in the brain. But it will vary a lot from one to another. And some people have much more severe small vessel disease than others at the same age. And it, it really causes most of the problems of chronic small vessel disease related problems of dementia and chronic difficulties beyond the age of 65 or 70. But even in young people, it's a very common cause of acute strokes where a deep blood vessel suddenly blocks off deep in the brain, causes what we call a lacuna stroke. And actually, one of the groups of people who stroke is rising in at, at that age um, is probably younger women, particularly. And lacuna strokes, these small blood vessels blocking off, is one of the main factors in that. So that's, that's an area of that active research to work out what the best thing to do is. Well, this, this sounds worrying. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, what, what, do you, what are the symptoms before something happens? Um, I understand uh, it, can, it can lead to stroke. Uh, it can lead to dementia. And then when someone gets a stroke or, or dementia or gets a brain scan uh, for some other reason, it, this condition can be discovered. But what are the symptoms if none of these three happen if we don't have uh, brain scans or if we still if we didn't have our stroke <laughs> or if we we are not demented how how can we notice this early enough or is is there any benefit of noticing this condition early is, is there anything that we can do to 
slow the process or whatever sure. we can do. So much like high blood pressure itself, actually, usually we don't know that there is small vessel disease in our brain. It is something which most commonly doesn't cause symptoms until it causes a stroke. When people get older, it's definitely associated with people being a bit being slower and functioning less well in their normal daily activities and just slowing down more than you might expect for their age. And it is associated with less good mental functions as people get older, less good cognition, ultimately leading, leading to dementia. But for most people, you wouldn't know you had small vessel disease unless you have a brain scan. And so this is another thing which needs to be prevented more than diagnosed and treated once it's there. And again, to prevent it getting worse, actually the evidence, the studies are still ongoing, but I think leading a healthy, balanced lifestyle and keeping your weight and your blood pressure under control are the most important things that we can identify to stop it developing and worsening. Um, I've discussed this thing previously with your colleagues, also uh, medical experts, and we we have come to a conclusion that uh, there are certain things which we can do for ourselves, but there is so much that a person can do for, for his own or her own health. And there are also some other factors influencing like social economic f uh, factors or air pollution and so on but if we leave these things aside uh, what is your opinion as a scientist who is deep deep in this subject and also as a as a man lead, leading a normal life what, what can you advise to other normal people non-medics um, what, what's the best way to prevent stroke sure so and i think ultimately a healthy lifestyle is important but we still have have to enjoy life and enjoy ourselves and do things that we take pleasure in. And so I think a good adage for life is nothing in to excess and everything in moderation. So I think the most important things that you can do for everybody is to stay healthy, to keep a good amount of exercise per week, to keep your weight under control, to keep your body mass, your BMI index um, less than 25, and particularly not put too much weight around the middle. So don't eat excessive amounts of sugar, probably excessive amounts of salt. Don't smoke, that's definitely very important, and don't drink alcohol to excess. But I wouldn't advocate giving up everything, giving up alcohol and just exercising and doing nothing else. I think you have to enjoy life as well. But keeping yeah. your weight under control and keeping a healthy diet. That said, it's still very common that people will develop high blood pressure even if they live a very healthy lifestyle or high cholesterol or other medical problems. And I think it is very important that nowadays people do get their blood pressure checked and their cholesterol checked. And I would advocate that, as is meant to happen in the UK, for example, everyone who's over the age of 40 gets their blood pressure checked and ideally gets it checked repeatedly every one to two, five years. It's very well controlled, but every few years have your blood pressure checked to make sure you aren't developing these problems in the middle of your life, which will cause you trouble later on. Okay, I think we have shed some light on, on certain things and conditions today, especially on, on, on the importance of uh, controlling uh, high blood pressure and its connection to small blood vessel disease and, and ultimately stroke. Uh, thank you so much for your time and for sharing uh, your views with, with us. Uh, and uh, we hope to hear more from you soon. Okay. Thank you very much.